Going into mid game, we have mission 26. Despite our agility boost to 130 from completing mission 17, it's still faster to dash than run. This will remain the case until we max out agility after mission 37. As a slight clerical note, we don't start the mission facing north, and instead have a forward path eastward, so be mindful of this when cardinal directions are mentioned in this tutorial. Run left and draw the sword, then aerial slash SK the guard below. Run forward a few steps, then dash 8 times and R jump up the ledge. Soft land, then L jump and back SK the ninja. L jump left and aerial into consecutive SK the spear guards. Dash east, and as you crest the hill, take note of the stationary guard. If he's looking towards you, stop short of the lantern, then roll twice around the corner. Otherwise, you can dash past the lantern. Continue dashing all the way to the ending trigger. The guard at the start of the stage is in a nearly perfect position for an aerial slash SK. While aerial slash SKs require both good positioning and timing, the guard's location under the ledge mostly sets up the timing for us. It's feasible to just mash X after running off the ledge to score the aerial slash, but a single or double press of the X button works just as well. This leaves positioning, which is also somewhat loose. Once you draw the sword, try to line up behind the guard and run off the edge due east. There are a variety of setups and angles you can use, so settle on one that's comfortable and consistent for you. Getting a standard SK can work, but it has some caveats. As discussed in the Mission 17 tutorial, it's a bit more than a second slower than the aerial slash. The notable distinction between the previous mission and this one is that there's no remedy for whipping the aerial. However, with a standard SK, you'll be much more vulnerable to guard RNG further in the mission. Notably, the ninja on top of the rock outcrop is due to turn around as we go in for the back SK. By delaying the first SK, you're within the timing window in which he either turns or yawns. <sighs> determined by RNG. With the aerial slash, we show up before either action is taken, eliminating the RNG element entirely. This is the core trade-off here. The aerial slash SK is a faster, more technical maneuver that removes an RNG element from the run, but it has some run-killing failure cases. The back SK is slightly slower, but encroaches on the ninja's RNG threshold. An aerial SK is quite a bit slower yet, and firmly places you in the maw of the ninja's RNG. Only the west guard needs to hear the dashes in this case. The east guard usually ends up in a similar state from hard landing the R jump or either of the two L jumps, but is not required. Soft landing the R jump allows for a consistent back SK on the ninja, which is optimal. However, if delayed due to a standard SK on the first guard, you can opt to hard land the R jump to break the ninja's default cycle in an attempt to mitigate the RNG. The second L jump that leads into the CSK can sometimes end up clipping on the ledge. While it's preferable to clear the ledge entirely, it doesn't really matter. If the L jump lands short, simply continue walking off the ledge in aerial SK. As touched on in the strategy breakdown segment, the final guard we encounter has an RNG element. He is stationary, but the direction he's looking is the problem. You can safely dash around the lantern if he's facing completely away, but rolling is required if he's facing you. The tricky bit is that even if it looks like he's facing northwest, he may begin turning as you round the corner and detect you. Rolling will always work for any of his rotations, so if there's any doubt, play it safe and roll. After passing the RNG guard, we do a single dash sequence. Don't worry too much about this, as doing two separate dash sequences is only slightly slower than optimal and can actually be faster than a single sequence that has a bad starting angle. Ninja. 